Hey everybody, they're really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Charming Empire along Sochi's route. If you'd like to hear Kei Yoshimine's route, please visit Rob's Romantic Gaming channel. Links in the description and the cards as usual. As for Sochi, we're on chapter 4 with him, and he's being quite the stealth character because he's barely showing up in his route. We've been uh, eavesdropping on people's conversations and talking to other people around him to learn things about him. But hopefully we'll actually get to spend some time with him soon. Let's see if we do in Chapter 4 or not. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Oh no. I stand there in shock when I hear the loud crash, and look down to the floor at the shattered vase. Oh, you've done it now. It was empty, so the rug didn't get wet, but the vase is horribly broken. Now you have to dress as a guy and become a member of the host club and get clients until you pay off the vase. For those of you who have watched Oran High School Host Club, sorry. What? What should I do? This vase was probably incredibly expensive. I can't say that I have an eye for such things, but when I asked how much the vase in my room had cost, I couldn't hide my surprise. There's no doubt in my mind that this vase was just as expensive. People see this walking down the hall all the time, so it must be even more valuable than the one in my room. How could I let this happen? I bury my head in my hands, thinking about the unimaginable position I put myself in. Well, you're the princess. I don't think they'd really do anything to you. I didn't mean to break it. As I was walking down the hall, the delicate beauty of the peonies on it caught my eye, and I couldn't help but stare. Looking should have been enough, but I felt the urge to touch it, and when I did... Why couldn't I have been more careful? I hate myself for being so careless. If it were only me who had fallen, I wouldn't have cared, but to break such an expensive vase... What am I going to do? Uh... <laughs> hide it? Uh, that would be horrible. Uh, I'm gonna confess... I should just tell someone about it and apologize. Someone's going to be angry. What am I going to do if they make me pay for it? I don't know, did they give me an allowance or something? They could take it out of my dowry when they marry me off. But yeah, it's best for her to confess because if, if it got blamed on somebody else, they could probably be put to death or something. I squat down and stare at the broken pieces when suddenly I feel a hand on my shoulder. Huh? I yelp in surprise and turn around to find Soshi eyeing me suspiciously. So soshi what are you doing? It's just as it looks. Oh, well, um... I have to tell him I broke the vase, but this sudden encounter has caught me off guard. My brother's glare gets more suspicious as I stand there silently until he looks behind me and seems to understand the situation. I... I'm sorry. I just touched it and it fell. Are you hurt? Aw, that was the right thing to say. Good job, Soshi. Inquire about my health before the vase. Huh? Um... I ask if you were hurt. Oh no, I'm fine, but the vase... It is no matter. I will have a servant clean it up, so step aside. But, but... Soshi rushes off to go get one of the servants. Soshi! He reluctantly turns around when I call out to him. You're not... angry? Do you want me to be? I didn't know you were so strange. <laughs> yeah, I like that kind of thing. And that's not what I meant. It's just that I broke the vase... Not to mention how expensive it must be. I was well prepared to be screamed at for this. One vase doesn't bother me. There are many others where it came from. No need for you to worry about it. Thank you. After bowing my head, I look up to find my brother looking even more irked. What? There's no reason to thank me. He's very blunt, but he doesn't seem scary right now. He makes me feel warm inside, and it's somehow reminiscent of our past. I thought you didn't remember the past. As a servant passes by, he casually orders in to clean the mess. The servant takes a broom and begins to clean up when suddenly he stops. His expression changes almost as fast as he turns around to face Soshi. L Lord Soshi, what happened to this? It's just as you see. This is a valuable present we received from a close ally of ours. What? It's that important? That must be why it looks so expensive. It's not about how much it costs, though. If it's a symbol of another country's friendship, what will happen if someone from there comes and it's not displayed? My face turns as pale as the servant's. I'm so sorry, I... Just as I step toward the servant, so she slips in front of me. I dropped it. Is there a problem with that? Oh, man, I'm surprised you're covering for me. What? My lord, how is this possible? Even the flustered servant is surprised with Soshi. It is broken and cannot be fixed. When the ambassador comes, I will apologize personally. Just hurry up and take care of it. 
Yes, Lord Soshi, forgive me. He briskly answers and begins to clean up the mess. Did Soshi just cover for me? Why are you asking? You were there, you know, you seen. I meekly address my brother from behind. Soshi. However, he only glances at me, then walks away without saying a word. Saddened after watching the servant clean up the vase, I turn to my room and sit down with a sigh. He really messed up this time. Did Soshi really stick his neck out for me? But why? Cause you're his little sister and he does love you. I can't understand why Soshi would say that to the servant to help me. I don't know his intention, but the fact of the matter is that he helped me. I should thank him, but how? I don't have anything to give him as a gift, and anything I could get for him, he likely wouldn't appreciate. Hmm, what could I do to make him happy? Embroider him a handkerchief? I rack my brain for anything, but the only thing I can do is embroidery. Oh, that's it. I don't know if he'll like it so much, but there's one thing I can do. My decision is final. I have to start preparing, so I get up and rush out of my room. And where am I going? The next morning, I ask my brother for something as I fix him tea. Soshi, do you mind if I ask for your plans for the day? I have desk work to take care of all day. So he's working all day again. I guess it wouldn't hurt to ask. Ready to be turned down, I muster up the courage to ask him. I was wondering if you'd like to have lunch together today? If you have time, of course. Soshi simply stares at me in silence. My confidence falters at his intense gaze, but I take a big gulp and continue. Would you like to? His expression is serious. He's probably too busy to oblige. If I can get enough work done by noon, I'll think about it. It's not a promise, but he didn't say no either. I'll be waiting for you at the bench in the garden. Bench? Oh yes, I'm surprised you remember that spot. I went there on my walk through the garden. The weather's nice today, so I'm sure it'll be a lovely place to go. I see, but as I said, only if I can get enough work done. That's good enough for me. You're strange. I didn't even give you a straight answer, but you're so happy. I'm very optimistic. You think that's strange? I'm just happy to see you give your answer genuine thought. You could have just refused, but you thought about it. That makes me happy. As I finish explaining quietly, so she drinks the rest of his tea. Is that the tea I made for him? If it was good enough for him to drink all of it, it must have met his standards. I guess it is my tea. Do your best at work today, Soshi. I tell him as he leaves the dining room. He doesn't reply, but he isn't vexed either. I guess that's good. Hoping Soshi will come for lunch, I get ready. I take the items I prepared yesterday and leave my room. The closer I get to where I'm going, the nicer the air smells. They must be getting along with preparations. Good morning. I greet them enthusiastically, and I'm met with an even livelier response. Good morning, princess. Good morning, everything's ready. The two chefs greet me with a smile as they continue working. I return a smile of my own and put on the apron I bought with me. Hope so she doesn't find out about this. He'll be mad. He said don't do any more servant work. What did Lord Soshi say? He said he would come if he got all his work done. It's the perfect day for a picnic, isn't it? This is what I thought of to thank my brother. Oh, so I'm not doing embroidery? <laughs> Dinner makes me so tense that my shoulders cramp up. I thought that if we changed locations, things would be more relaxed between my brother and I. However, I had no way of getting everything ready myself. So yesterday, after surprising the chefs with my idea, they decided to help me. Is Soshi a picky eater, do you think? Hmm. He always eats whatever we serve right away, so I don't think so. Good. Then we can continue with the plan. I sigh in relief as I take out the recipe the old woman had included with the letter. I would have been in trouble if it had been something my brother didn't like. The recipe is written in detail, so I can make it without botching the amounts or cooking times. As I get everything ready, checking the recipe as I go, I hear a gasp of admiration. Oh, I guess I'm really good at this. Is this some home cooking from where you were living, princess? Yes, the old woman I lived with was originally from here, but learned this recipe in the countryside. I love it. Aha, uh -huh, so that's why. The flavors and methods used to cook this are much different from here. I'm learning a lot. Do you not make food like this around here? I was served something very similar to the food I eat in the countryside for breakfast so I thought it wouldn't be uncommon. Oh, the greens pickled in miso? That was new for me, too. It makes for some delicious food. It's a little embarrassing to admit how little we know, but we just learned how to make that. 
Lord Soshi taught us. Wow, Lord Soshi actually taught them? My brother did? I never would have thought Soshi liked cooking. He studied up on a lot of things before you arrived. He thought you might not like the food here. Oh, he was even more considerate than I thought. It's much more relaxing to have some food from home. It's just like Lord Soshi to think of that. Soshi did that for me? It's the first I've heard of it, and I'm very surprised. I didn't think he thought of me at all. Oh boy, Princess, it's getting late. Do you think we should start cooking? Oh, you're right. Let's get started right away. I get right down to cooking. I'm not quite used to these kitchens, but I follow the old woman's recipes scrupulously. Stick to the plan. I glance up at the clock every now and then, and after a couple hours, the food is done. A couple hours cooking for a picnic? Man, we're finished. This is one fancy picnic. It's safe to say that it came out well. Although there were a few things I messed up here and there, the end result is delicious. If I do say so myself, apparently. I put the side dishes on the top shelf of the bento, and rice balls wrapped in seaweed on the bottom. I'll leave the one that's smushed. I wrap up the bento box and take off my apron to finish up. Before I head out to the garden, I need to return my apron to my room. I should have just enough time to go to my room before heading to the garden. Thank you both so much. It was a big help. Come again sometime. You're always welcome. I will, thank you. I bow to them and leave the kitchens. After returning to my room, I go out to the garden, but no one's there yet. Oh, don't stand me up, Soshi, after all this work. Maybe I'm a little early. I should wait. Relieved that I'm on time, I take a seat on the bench. I don't know what I would have done if I kept my brother waiting. Maybe if he doesn't show up, we can go visit his office and bring the food there. The air is calming. The gentle breeze wafts up the sweet scent of the flowers as it blows by. What a beautiful day. Lunch will be wonderful if we eat it here. I smile as I look down at the bento. I hope Soshi is happy. Turning my gaze to the palace, I wait for Soshi to come into view. However, minutes pass, even a half hour, yet he still doesn't show. I clutch my growling stomach and sigh quietly. He must be busy with work. That's right, he has so much work to do. He said he would come when it was finished. It wasn't a promise, though. It's only natural for Soshi to prioritize his work over a picnic. I understand that, but... There's too much food for just me. I want to laugh, but my voice only shudders. My vision blurs a little, making the sunshine shimmer brightly. What's wrong with me? I can't do anything about how busy Soshi is. I planned this without telling him, and it just didn't work out. It's no one's fault. I'm just upset because I'm hungry. Now's the best time to eat a hearty meal. I do my best to put some cheer in my voice as I unwrap the bento. The lunch inside is far too much for one person. I can just eat the leftovers later. Time to dig in. I take a bite of one of the side dishes. The food I've always loved, taught to me by the old woman. This is delicious. It tastes just like the old woman's. It came out just like how she used to make it. It's so nostalgic in its deliciousness that it nearly brings me to tears. It's so good. So very good. I whisper to myself as I continue eating alone. Aww. Aw, why didn't we take it to Soshi? We should have done that. We should have interrupted his... his work to do that. <laughs> oh well. We'll see what happens with the situation in the next episode. So, hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.